Hey guys, my name is Aubrey and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, then this is my channel and here we discuss all things entrepreneurship, Turo, Airbnb, investing, personal finance, and everything in between. If you enjoy this type of content, then I would greatly appreciate you hitting that subscribe button and hitting that like button. It really helps the YouTube algorithm and I would greatly appreciate it if you could do that. If you are already subscribed, then I appreciate you and welcome back. So today I wanna to talk about what you need to do on Turo in order to make money, in order to make the most amount of money. And what I mean by this is that if you are on Turo and if you, this is more than just offsetting the cost of your car payments, if this is more than just a hobby for you and you wanna turn this into a legitimate business, then I wanna tell you five things that you need to be doing in order to ensure that that business can be successful. So in today's video, I wanna talk about five things that you need to do if you wanna make money on Turo. So these tips are for you if you are somebody who is using Turo as a legitimate business. You are not using Turo as just a way to offset the cost of your car payment. This isn't just a hobby for you. This is an actual either side business or you want it to become a legitimate full-time business. And these are five things that in my opinion, you should absolutely be doing if you fall under these categories. Now, these five things aren't the only five things that they you should be doing, but they're just five things that I, in my opinion, can really make a difference between making money and losing money in the Turo business. So number one is buy your cars cheap. So regardless of what type of car you are buying, whether it be a high-end luxury car, a mid-tier car, an economy car, even a cheap shooter, the price you pay of the car is really important because it affects depreciation rate, which affects you when you go to sell the car or even during tax season. It also affects the payout in the case that a car gets totaled. So of course a shooter, which is like a lower tier, cheaper car, um, of course a shooter is going to be cheaper than a like 2020 Lincoln Navigator. Of course, like that you're gonna pay more for the Lincoln, but regardless of what tier you are renting out, you need to make sure to buy that car as cheap as possible. That means if you are buying a 2010 Toyota Yaris and the Kelly Blue Book value of that car is, is $5,000, you wanna try your absolute best to buy that car lower than $5,000, as low as you can possibly go. And you wanna make sure that you never spend like six, seven, eight thousand dollars or more than the value of the car purchasing it. The reason why is because of depreciation, but also if your car gets totaled during a rental, Turo will pay you out the actual cash value of the vehicle or their ACV of the vehicle, which means that you'll get the actual cash value of the vehicle. You will not get what you paid for it. You won't necessarily get the Kelly Blue Book value of it. You won't get anything near the MSRP of that car. You're going to get the actual cash value. And the cheaper you buy that car, the closer that the ACV will be to the price you paid if the car gets totaled. The amount you pay for the car may not seem that important because at the end of the day, you'll make the money back during a rental, but in the case that the car gets totaled, you could really get screwed over if you overpay for a vehicle. So that is my number one tip. Make sure to buy the cars as cheap as possible, but make sure they're not too cheap to where they're like pieces of crap. You still want them to be good cars, but have them be at like the lowest point in their depreciation curve. My second tip for you is reimbursements. Keep track of them. If you are familiar with the Turo app, then you know that whenever you rent your car out, or even if you're renting a car out, the host has the ability to keep to, to request for reimbursement. These reimbursements can be a number of things. They can be cleaning fees for dirty cars, they can be tolls, they can be overage miles, they can be gas costs. And make sure that you have a procedure in place for reimbursements and that you stick to that every single time. Whether it be overage miles and you charging 50 cents a mile or 75 cents a mile or 10 cents a mile or you charging for gas and the, and the inconvenience fee that comes with that. The reason why I stress this so much is because it sometimes can be hard to charge these reimbursements because if somebody's a really great renter and you really like them as a person and they're really nice but they go over 
on miles by 250 miles, it's going to be really tempting to cut them a break. But the thing that you need to remember is that this is a business. You have to make money or else this isn't viable. And part of that procedure of making money is charging for reimbursements. That means that you charge for overage miles if a guest goes over. You charge that inconvenience fee if a guest doesn't fill up the gas. You charge for a smoking claim if a guest smokes in your car. Know your rules and know the guidelines that Turo allows for hosts. Know how much you're allowed to charge if somebody smokes in your car or takes their dog in your car. Know how much you're allowed to charge for overage miles and, and charge those things. Because things like overage miles especially, you may not think that there's a huge cost to it, but every mile costs you money. Every mile that a guest drives in your car costs you money out of your pocket. And if you don't charge for those overage miles fairly, then you will lose money in the long run because those miles are gonna rack up so fast. My second tip is to keep track of reimbursements and tolls are included in that. Make sure that you're keeping up with toll charges and who's going under tolls and how much those cost and how much you need to be reimbursed for that. These costs add up extremely quickly. I think for me, like I, I do over a thousand dollars a month in reimbursements and a lot of that is just like people not filling up the gas tank so filling it up for them and then charging them that cost or people going over tolls my cars are cheap enough that if i didn't charge people for the to their tolls i would be out of business, like I would have been out of business months ago. So you have to keep up with st that stuff, you have to keep up with reimbursements and you have to charge it. Number three is repairs and maintenance on the vehicles. Whether or not you repair the cars yourself, I think is optional to you. Like if you don't wanna repair your cars yourself or if you don't feel comfortable doing it, regardless of the fact, you have to have a process in place for maintenance and for repairs and you have to have that be a cheaper option. So back on the topic of like totaled cars or wrecked cars, is that Tura will often lowball you when it comes to paying out a damage claim, which means that if somebody rear ends your car, you take it to a shop and the shop will quote you $2,500. Oftentimes, Tura will pay out significantly less than that. And there is a supplement process, so you can go in and try to supplement that difference and get the money back, but it's never guaranteed. And so my solution to that is always try to repair your vehicles in the most cost-effective way as possible. And if that means taking taking your car to a small shop to get it repaired rather than a dealership, if that means buying like good bumpers or good fenders or um, good panels from maybe a salvaged car at a junkyard or from eBay, then do that. Um, there's a lot of creative ways that you can go about repairing, especially the body of a car in a totally 100% safe manner, but in a very cost effective way. And that's something that you, you should definitely explore and you should definitely take advantage of if you're going to be renting out a lot of cars on Turo. Because the cost of a day damage claim isn't just the cost of the damage that occurred onto your car, but the other cost is the amount of time that it's sitting getting repaired. And that's a cost that you'll never get back. If you have a damage claim that costs, that Turo pays out $1,500 for, and you then get it repaired for $1,500, well, what about for those days where the car is sitting? Like, you're not making any money off of that. And so a good way to offset that cost is to repair your car a bit cheaper, and then you can make some extra money through the damage claim to kind of offset those off days. And so my third tip is to have a process in place for maintenance and repairs, either by doing it yourself or, or maybe even contacting a small shop and, and doing maybe some sort of like deal with them where you'll take all, their bi all your business to them, but they'll give you a discount or like even reaching out to a friend who may be good with cars and hiring them. There's a lot of ways that you can do it that, it, that are cost effective and professional. And I could maybe go over that in another video, but I really think that, again, damage claims can make or break a Turo business. And if you don't have a process in place in order to at least break even during those damage claims, then I think that you're going to be in a bad spot. Number four is to take pre-trip and post-trip photos. I cannot stress that enough because any claim that you have is going to be dependent on these photos. Whether it be a smoking claim, a mileage claim, a gas claim, a damage claim, your photos are your evidence. And if you don't take your photos and if you don't take them 24 hours before a trip starts, then you have zero evidence and Turo will side with the guest every single time. I have had it to where like, a guest will smoke in my car, they'll even leave their cigarette in the center console and there's ash everywhere, it smells like 
absolute disgusting cigarette smoke. And whenever I go to claim it, they deny it 100%. It's as if they never did anything. Well, lucky for me, I always take my own photos and I do it every single rental that, so it's never been an issue for me. But Turo relies on those photos. And if I didn't have them, then they would have denied my claim. So you need to make sure to take photos because when it comes to claims, whether it be mileage, gas, smoking, cleaning, damage, anything, your only evidence is your photos. And so take pre-trip and post-trip photos 24 hours before and after a trip start and end time every single time, no excuses, 100% of the time. And if you can't do it, then hire somebody to do it. Because if you can't do that, then you shouldn't be in this business. And doing that will ensure that you can make a profit. So my last tip for you guys, and this is kind of a broad one, is to be smart about your purchases. For me, whenever I first started doing Turo, um, I feel like whenever I like need to do, do, an, do an oil change, I just run to Walmart and get the, the appropriate oil filter and oil. Whenever I needed tires, I just go to discount. Whenever I needed a part, I would just like go to O'Reilly's or AutoZone. And over time, and as I've gotten more cars, I've realized that that is not the right way to go about doing it because there's so many hidden costs in that. And so as a result, I've started buying my oil in bulk whenever it's on sale. And I've started buying oil filters directly from the manufacturer, saving three to like $6 per oil filter. I'm looking at ways to buy my tires directly from the manufacturer and then having a connection with a local shop where they can mount and balance them for cheaper. I have a corporate account with O'Reilly's, which anybody can get, um, where I save, sometimes I'll save 50 to 60% on parts. For example, I recently bought rotors and brakes and the total without my corporate discount came out to like 180. And then once I gave them my corporate account number, the total dropped down to like 60. So it was more than 50% savings. Explore anywhere where you can cut costs. And there's a lot of ways to do it. Like by setting up corporate accounts with, with stores that you visit often, by creating connections with local small shops, by reaching out to local tire distributors and figuring out how you can get these tires direct for the manufacturer by buying things on bulk when they're on sale. I think that for me, planning my purchases in advance, like buying my oil in bulk or having my cleaning supplies on hand or buying my own vacuum, these investments that cost more up front have always paid off in the end. And for me, like every time I change an oil now, I save $10 and I, then I save even more on the oil filter. Once I get this like tire connection all set up, every single time I, I get a new set of tires, I'll save 80 to $100. Every time I go to O'Reilly's, I save tons of money. There's a lot of ways where you can just save so much money by, by pre-planning these things and thinking them out in advance. And I know for me, that's a lesson that I learned that I wish I would have learned a lot sooner. And I'm really glad that I've learned it now. And so that is my fifth tip for you is pre-plan your purchases and make as many bulk or connection purchases as you can by like having accounts in place, buying in bulk, reaching out to local shops and distributors. I think that that is along with the reimbursement point is the best way to make the most money on Turo is to lower your costs by being smart. So that is the end for this video. Um, I think that it can sometimes be like a, a tricky slope because Turo seems so easy on the surface. You rent out your money, your car, you get money, and then it's it's all fine and dandy. But then once you start getting a lot of cars and you start treating it like a real business, you realize just how much this business can cost. And it's important to make money where you can make money. And I don't mean by like screwing over your hosts, like your guests, like I don't want, and I don't mean like screwing over your guests. Like if somebody doesn't smoke in your car, or leaves your car a little bit dirty, like don't charge them. I very rarely, I very rarely charge cleaning fees unless somebody smokes in the car. Remember at the end of the day, this is a business. You're here to make money. You're not here to give people breaks left and right. And it's important for you to follow your principles as a business owner and to follow the appropriate steps to make money. You're not creating a business to lose money. You're not creating a business for a hobby. And sometimes doing those things that make you the most money create some problems. They can be hard and they can take a lot of effort, but it is at the end of the day, 100% worth it. And so I appreciate you guys checking out this video. If you found these tips helpful, then hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video.